Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. First of all, we have to understand something. We've got a problem that we address in the book Harpezo. Different Christians mean different things by the same terms, which are not always what the scripture means. Some people misidentify the 70th week of Daniel, the final seven lunar years of history, as the Great Tribulation. It's the whole seven years. Or they equate it with Hatekofat Hatzarat Yaakov, the time of Jacob's trouble. They assume it's the full seven year period. That's their assumption. Exegetically, however, that's not what the scriptures teach. The Great Tribulation is one phase of that final seven year period. The opening phase can be called the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of woes. The next phase is the Great Tribulation, commencing in verse 9 of Matthew 24. The final phase is the day of the Lord, the day of his wrath, which is inaugurated by the rapture and resurrection. Once the Lord removes his faithful church, he pours out his wrath on the kingdom of Antichrist. They will deliver you to tribulation, thelipsis, and they'll kill you, etc., etc. Then it goes on, describing the Antichrist and finally what's going to take place during that period of the Great Tribulation, with the false prophets being prolific, etc. But in verse 29, but immediately after the thelipsis, after the tribulation, verse 29 and verse 9 are talking about the same event. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. This harkens back to the prophecies of the prophet Joel, primarily. And the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Remember, in his first coming, the wise men saw the sign in the sky, and it says all Jerusalem was troubled with Herod, that the Messiah was coming. One is a picture of the other. His first coming always foreshadows his second. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds in the sky with power and great glory. The rapture is a secret in the sense we do not know the day or the hour it's going to happen. But when it happens, it's not going to be this mysterious disappearance. People are going to know. They're going to say, hide us under the rocks. It happens at the end of the Great Tribulation. Not at the end of the seven years. At the end of the Great Tribulation. This is at some point after the halfway point. It occurs between the sixth and seventh seal in the book of Revelation. So in that sense, we can say we are post-trib because we believe he's coming after the Great Tribulation. But we are not post-trib in the sense of meaning at the end of the seven years because the notion that the Great Tribulation is the seven years, the full seven years, is nonsense. It is not the full seven years. It's the beginning of birth pangs or the beginning of woes or the beginning of sorrows, then it's the Great Tribulation, and then finally, ultimately, it is the Day of the Lord. During the Tribulation, believers are subjected to what they've always been subjected to, the anger and wrath of Satan. But we never experience the wrath of God. We are not appointed unto wrath, God says. Once the faithful church has been removed by rapture and resurrection, then God pours out his wrath on the kingdom of Antichrist. That happens after the great tribulation. Not at the end of the seven years, 
but during it. Do not equate the Great Tribulation with the full seven years. It is only one portion of it. It is the middle portion. It's not all of it. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you.